Hey, you guys, welcome back. Welcome back. In today's video, we are going to be doing an unboxing and review on the Epson EcoTank 16600. I got this printer yesterday from Office Depot. The retail price is $1,099 with tax and everything included. I paid like $1,230. I did get the additional um, insurance plan on it from Allstate, which was $60 for two years. So it wasn't that bad. And I'm going to explain why I chose this Eco Tank because I wanted this specific model for a reason. As you guys know, I sell sublimation transfers and I print a lot. And normally I would use my F570, but I'm just putting too many prints on it and it can't handle that many prints. And then the converted printers I normally use are the ET8550s and I love them. They're awesome printers. They just cannot handle my workload. And I noticed with those printers, once I get to around 20,000 prints on them, they tend to start having issues. And I've been through a few of them, so I was just tired of going through them. And then with this being a more expensive printer, the 16600, it's made for office use, so it will be able to handle my print load. And that's also another reason why I got the Allstate insurance on it, because that's different from the warranty. So Allstate really doesn't care too much about what happens like your printer could fall off a roof i mean it's an insurance plan so if something happens to it they're going to fix it even if the warranty doesn't cover it that's the purpose of having the insurance plan but anyway i'm gonna go ahead and get into today's video this is the ink we will be using because i do not have any cosmos ink but you guys know when you first convert a sublimation printer for that first initial charge it does use up the majority of the ink so once that ink runs low i'll go ahead and run out to cosmos and get um a four pack for it to refill it but we're gonna go ahead and get started i'm gonna open it up and see what's in the box i might have to cut the video and come back after I see what's in the box because the printer itself is about 50 pounds. So I want to be careful when I lift it out the box. Uh, and I don't want y'all seeing me struggling and stuff. But I mean, it's a massive, massive box. It's a massive box. Okay, you know, we already know what comes in the box, basically. You got your instruction manual and your CD. We'll put that to the side. I have an iMac, so I can't use the CD. So I'll just download my drivers off of um, the Epson website. And then here's our power cord. And here's our inks. Now, I'm not going to use these inks in this printer because, of course, we're converting it to sublimation. So I'm going to put these to the side and keep these for my regular Epson Eco Tank that I use just for everyday use. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and finish unboxing it and get it out of the box and onto the table. And once I do that, we'll be back. Okay, you guys, so we got it out of the pack. It was kind of hard. I just pulled it basically by the plastic bag. It's pretty massive. It is a massive printer because, like I said, it is made for office business use. So I'm going to go ahead and get all of the blue tape off of it and all the little stuff that comes on during the shipping process. And then we're going to go ahead and fill it up with our inks and turn it on. So once I get all that done, I'll be back. Well, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna let y'all see, but I'll be back also.
As you can see, it's a lot of tape everywhere. But if you're familiar with the Epson printers, you know that's normally how they go. It's got the auto sheet feeder. And then this is where the 13 by 19s are going to be loaded. Uh-oh. Okay, I'll take those off later. Because I got 13 paper. 13 by 19 paper coming for it in the um from Amazon. So it'll be delivered in the morning. Cause that's just holding the tray down basically. Let me see if I can grab it off. That's the one annoying thing that drives me crazy about. Okay, here we go. There we go. Uh oh, no, let me tear it up already, y'all. Uh oh. Okay, that's a lot more fancier. Y'all see that? Uh, the tray in the back, that's where the 13. By 19 paper is going to go. All right, let me get the rest of this tape off really fast and we can start setting it up. Ooh, that's a big daddy. You got your maintenance tank right here in the front. So if I ever have any issues, I mean, well, not issues, but whenever I need to change it. It's right here. Well, it's not even slide it out, but it's right there. And simple to get to. You got your print head over here. And, of course, it has the transportation lock for when you're um, transporting it. You turn the little blue lever. All right, so I got all of the blue tape off on the inside. Uh -oh. Now we need to pick up this second layer. Let me see how. Oh, no, that doesn't pick up. Okay. So I just pull the tape off, I'm guessing. Yep. And then that's where we'll put our ink at. And then, I don't know if you guys can see it. It's got two trays at the bottom you can put your papers in here so you load this up each tray will accept 250 sheets so that's another reason why i like the, this printer because i don't have to keep getting up to reload the tray unlike with the 8550 because the 8550 can't even hold 100 sheets. That's automatic. When we turn it on, it will um, pop out like the 8550. Okay. So I believe I now have all of the tape off. Uh-oh. That slammed down too hard. I didn't mean to do that. So we're going to go ahead and install our inks and once we get our inks in we can turn it on like i said i'm using this ink once we get our inks in, we can go ahead and turn it on and let it start the init initialization process and that normally takes with the first time setup printer that normally takes about 20 minutes to let all the inks run through the line Okay, I've never used the Hippo's ink before. I'm a Hippo ink newbie. So, we're going to see how this goes. We're going to see how this goes. I did get the tops that go right into the um, printer. Like with the, um, with the Cosmos ink. Make sure you are putting the right color in it. It does tell you up here at the top. The first one is going to be the black.
Okay, let's see. Yep, I hear it going in. And I'm not too upset about using the hippo ink because once I turn it on, it's going to use up a good bit of the ink for the first initial charge. And once I run out of all the ink, I'm just going to go ahead and switch it to Cosmos. Okay, we're going to do this and we're going to go through each color. And then once we go through each color and I get ready to turn it on, I'll be back. Okay, you guys, so we have it filled up with ink and we have it plugged in. We are going to go ahead and power it on and see what it says. Okay, we're going to go ahead and set it up. I'm going to do English, USA. Daylight savings time is currently summer. Date format. We're going to do traditional. What's today's date? I think the 9th. Yeah. So it is 07, 09, um, 2023. Okay, time format 12 hour. What time is it? It is currently 824. 820. Uh oh. 24. It says preparing. And while it does the initialization process, I will go ahead and um, download the drivers. So I'm going to start that over here. Epson 16600 driver. I do have iMac, so I'm using my iMac computer. Okay, let's see. Okay, Mac OS, download. All right, so we have our download, our drivers downloaded. Sorry for the kids, they a little turned up back there. You see Epson Scan Smart, Epson User Guide. All right, we don't need that, but we will use the Scan Smart install because it scans wide up to 13 by 19. All right, so it's downloading the drivers and it is preparing after it does that. I'm going to assume I'll have to hook it up. Okay, what does it say? It says, see the start here bundle with printer on website to complete initialization. Okay, so I guess that's coming up in the drivers I'm downloading. So let's see what this says real quick. Give me a little bowl so I can get my wings. <laughs> All 
Okay, so it's downloading all the drivers and utilities. So let's see about how long that takes. I do see an error message on there. I don't know what that's about. Yeah, I'm liking this printer already because I can tell just by how big it is that it's going to be right. Okay, yo. Let's ask me to start. Says make sure the transportation lock is in the thing and then hit proceed. So it's about to charge the ink. Proceed is asking me is all the inks got stuff. Yep. Alright, now we're gonna start charging the inks. Now we all know that it says it takes nine minutes. So we're gonna let that do what it needs to do. And we'll be back. back it has finished that process so we're gonna go ahead and hit close select paper type and paper size all right hold on let me go ahead and do what i need to do on the computer we're gonna do a wireless connection set up printer for the first time All right, hold on, we're going to come back to that because it's asking to connect to the printer. So we're going to go ahead and put in the rest of this pack of paper. This is HTV Run. I recently switched to this. So let's put that in. These trays also fit up to um, 11 by 17. Okay, so I hope we got it in there right. Oh, I hope we got it in there right. Let's see. Because that one... Is that two? I got paper tray. We're gonna do the super B for the paper tray. All right, okay. Okay, that's the fact, so we're not going to do this. We'll mind you better now. When I need to use the facts, we'll use the facts. Okay, it looks like it's ready. Let's set it up to the internet from the mat now. Now it's asking me to print the test page. So we're going to print the test page. Okay. It's working. Let's go that sheet. Oh, it spit that thing out fast. Oh, man. Yes. 
Pony do it. Oh, you got it. All right, continue. Add facts. I'm gonna go ahead and register it and everything. Okay, you guys, I'm going to try this first setting with just the plain paper setting and see how it comes out. Oh, no, that's pretty too fast. we got to slow that down. We're going to have to put it on paper presentation. Man. Look at the lines in it. Yeah, that's not going to work. Hold on. Okay, it's basically saying that I don't have the white paper. So, we're just basically going to let it go. Okay, this should come out better because it is printing slower. Like with a regular document, it'll spit them out. I love the big paper tray on it. I'm in love with this printer. I already want two more. One for regular printing and another one for sublimation. Probably put those on my um on my new manifestation board. Okay, y'all, that look like that's it. Yes, you know I can already tell the difference from the other one. But I knew the other one was going to come out wrong anyway, just because of how fast it spit that print out. Oh, yes. Look at that, y'all. Look at that. Look at the detail. Okay, that hippo ink is okay. Okay. Look at that, y'all. Beautiful. All right. Well, that is the Epson 16600. Like I said, it does print 13 by 19. Y'all see that tray in the back? That's where I'll load the big paper. I'm waiting for that to come from Amazon tomorrow. So I'll upload like a little short video on um, YouTube so y'all can see it printing the big pictures because I got to print some of those out tomorrow as soon as I get the paper. But so far, first initial review of the 16600 is, I love it, y'all. I love it. Like, look at the print quality. Print is just as good as my Epson um, F570. I love it. I absolutely love it. It's already used up the majority of the ink. I'm not sure if I'm going to put more Hippo in it or if I'm going to go with Cosmos. Drop down in the comments what you think I should do. Because I'm not going to lie. That Hippo ink is nice. I can't, I don't really see the difference in between my Cosmos. I'm going to um, order some more tumblers and have those come tomorrow and see how this presses on the tumbler. But... That is my review of the Epson 16600. You guys will see it in the vlogs, working in the background. And after I run it for a few months, I'll come back and I'll give you guys another review on this printer. But first initial thoughts is I do love it. I love it. It was a good investment. I will be buying another one for sublimation. And then preferably I'll buy another one also for business use. If I don't get that printer that I seen I really liked in Office Depot yesterday. But I do need a good big printer for office use. But that's my 
review and I love it. I do highly recommend it. So if you were thinking about getting this for sublimation and you want something that's going to be sturdy and dependable, I think this is going to be the machine. Let me know what you guys think and I appreciate you guys for watching. And until the next video, I'll see y'all later.